Welcome back. Now the Western Cape is at risk of widespread flooding. Disruptive rains are damaging properties and threaten the loss of lives for many in the region. Colin Diner, who's Head of Disaster Management for the Western Cape, joins us with an update alongside Tarina Flock, who's MD at Elite Risk Acceptances. For more on the insurance front, good afternoon to you both and thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Wonderful. Colin, we'll start off with you. Keen to just get, uh, you know, the overall uh, state of things within the Western Cape. What has uh, transpired to date and where we are now? Right. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much. Yes. So uh, we received the warning on Friday mm. uh, from South African Weather Services for a level six uh, weather system, a cut or flow system. Now, generally, uh, you know, this time of year going into our winter, we do get severe warnings. Uh, so we do do a lot of planning. We have a winter plan in place, uh, winter response plan that was uh, brought in. But then we got a message on Saturday morning that it was being upgraded to a level nine. Now, when it gets uh, when it gets to that level, it is a severe incident. We looked at uh, at a number of of uh, actions that needed to be taken. Uh, so what we felt was uh, to be safe. We looked at the areas that were going to be classified level nine, which is the Overberg the Cape Winelands and the Helderberg Basin. And we asked our education department to consider closing schools at high risk there. And a whole range of other uh, emergency measures were brought in. Rescue services were activated, uh, tr provincial traffic. Uh, we did a lot of work with our Department of Infrastructure in clearing areas. And so that is really what happened. The big winds came through on Saturday and Sunday. We had 14 fires, large fires on the prefrontal system. Uh, so we had to deal with quite a lot of firefighting operations yesterday. Uh, we had an informal settlement fire, which again brought in our humanitarian support. And then late uh, last night, we started getting the rain. We are now on the point where we're still expecting, in fact, the level nine uh, rain showers to come in over the Overberg. There's been quite, quite a bit of rain, but that's really where we stand at the moment. Thank you for that, uh, Colin. Uh, I'd like to bring you in here, Tarina. Uh, from an insurance perspective, we know that the, uh, the Cape actually uh, has a lot of heritage sites, a lot of high net worth individuals also might be impacted there. Let's just talk about what you might be seeing from your front from that insurance. Uh, any claims coming in yet and the ex expecting uh, of claims? Yes, certainly, certainly. We have a, a, a good representation in the Western Cape of our client base. And certainly some, some clients have suffered devastating losses. We've ha had reports of roofs blown, blown off, trees that fall on structures and vehicles. So, so yes, it can be devastating for whether you're high net worth, whether you have a normal home, whether you have a heritage home, mm -hmm or not uh, yeah these extreme weather events that we are seeing at an increasing rate can definitely cause havoc to property thank you for that uh, colin i really want to speak about infrastructure here it's a big issue here in south africa uh, you know we've battled to keep our infrastructure maintained for a while but now that we're seeing climate change events becoming more prevalent and the western cape having seen uh, you know some climate change events in the past uh, a few years where are we now uh, can our infrastructure withstand at this level nine uh, warning and what might possibly happen here Yes, I think the important thing really is preparation. Um, and it's not just preparation when you get a warning. It's, it's long-term preparation. Uh, what we've been doing for a number of years is we've, we've looked at the concept of what we call our early winter plan or our winter plan and then our summer plan. And those are like more of a strategic plan that sets the course for being prepared. So we look a lot more at risk reduction than, than, than just response. So what we're trying to look at in this case is beginning of the of the winter season. Uh, the we look at things like are your drains being cleared, are your you know are your structures in place, uh, and then we have to work with the different uh, stakeholders to do that. An example, maybe if I can mention, was the incident we had recently in the Central Karoo where we lost uh, I think it was seven uh, Eskom pylons. You know that put us at, at a massive risk. Uh, in the sense that we had almost 30,000 people without electricity for for uh, about 10 days, uh, which meant a huge humanitarian operation. So our pre-plans have to really be in place to make sure that infrastructure is looked after. I, I believe resilience means infrastructure can take a hit and keep standing. And that's really the direction that we need to work in uh, towards. 
absolutely agree with you. Uh, Tarina, keen to get your thoughts on the issue of preparation uh, from an individual, if your business uh, also insured during this time. What does it mean to be prepared uh, for something of this magnitude? Well, I couldn't agree more. Um, for individuals, it is exactly the same. Ensure that your property is properly maintained. Clear your roof and your gutters. Make sure that everything's clean, your drains as well, that there's no tree roots that, that uh, um, block your drains. And, and all of that will definitely contribute to much better resilience to these uh, harsh events but i must rush to add uh, we've seen beautifully maintained properties uh, sustaining severe damages in in this type of weather mm. so it's not it's not always a case of lack of maintenance but i couldn't agree more that preparation for individuals and businesses as well uh, is the best defense Colin, uh, can you bring you back here? Uh, what does working with national government look like at this point? You have the warnings, uh, you've done what you can uh, to prepare, and of course uh, you continue to uh, communicate with communities, uh, business and individuals, households here. National government, uh, you know, how do you work with them? Do you work with them uh, in times like this uh, to ensure uh, that we do have uh, the most, uh, I guess, um, the, the best solution uh, possible uh, for whatever may transpire? Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, there's a couple of different national government agencies that we work with or departments that we work with. We obviously have the National Disaster Management Center who we uh, would request. So if we request, for example, resources from the SA Defense Force or we need to uh, get some sort of national resource, we will work through them. But I mean, SOARS, South African Weather Services, play a critical role. Uh, you know, we have a lot of weather events. We have a lot of fire events and uh, to know what the incident is going to be doing so that's a very important role and then of course national human settlements uh, who have the emergency housing grant they're the custodians of that so there are various uh, and then obviously south african police services who provide us with rescue divers who provide us with the rescue capability so we have what we do is we establish what we call a joint operations center now i mean this morning's and yesterday's joint operations center our premier was in those meetings um they are st tactical meetings, but you know it even goes to that level. And we have the national departments represented. It's it's a lot about building up the relationships mm -hmm. long before the time. Mm -hmm. And I think you know it's really from a disaster perspective. I think the the cooperation is good, um, and and it's important that, that we sort of know when we pick up the phone who's the person on the other side, who's the person that is going to be there to support us. And that's really where our cooperation, I think, uh, really comes in quite quite well. And with that said, uh, Colin, now that we, uh, we know some roads have been closed, some uh, you know, schools have been closed, obviously businesses held back today, can we expect day-to-day -day updates uh, for citizens uh, playing it by ear to really understand uh, what the next uh, best step may be? Yes, absolutely. So our Premier's office is handling the communication and they're giving out communication on a whole range of, of uh, government uh, uh, social media platforms as well as official media releases. Uh, look, I mean, the most important thing is uh, uh, to, to, to appreciate our rescue teams can't be everywhere. Mm -hmm. Our traffic police can't be everywhere. Uh, the public really have to take their safety into, you know, into consideration, their family's safety. Uh, disasters is never just a government response. It's a all of it's a all of society response. So we will be providing everything we possibly can. But we also realize it's a big province. It's a big area that's getting affected. So it's really important to have the public um, you know, take heed of what we of what we're asking for. We imagine that the schools closures won't be, you know, an, a long process. We're meeting again at, at one o'clock to discuss that. Uh, but but we will keep people updated on that. I'd like to thank you both for uh, you know your time this afternoon. Hoping that the worst of it is behind us. Uh, thank you so much for speaking to us. That was Colin Diner. He's head of disaster management for the Western Cape, and Tarina Flock, MD at Elite Risk Acceptances.